Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forged Lines Forever, where today we're going to be looking at a 4v4 played on the Naroxis map generator. Before we get into introducing those play our players, please remember to like and subscribe. We've also added a membership option to the channel in case you were unaware, and if you do want to support the channel that way, it comes with a couple of extra perks. And with my attention whoring and fuck you pay me mentality out of the way, let's go ahead and get into introducing our players, starting with Team 1 in the top right. We're going to go with the rear guard, I would assume air position first, a red Cybran going by the name of Siren6977. Moving on to the south for his first ally, we have ourselves a yellow UEF going first land by the name of Retros M8 going first land. Then we can move to the northwest, another, oh, that's actually green, not yellow, but this is a yellow Aeon going by the name of Sono Phibis going first land. And northwest further, we have a gray UEF best faction going first land by the name of K-Link. Moving to the southern team, starting yet again in the air slot, we have ourselves a white UEF by the name of Steel Darth, and he's gone first air. Moving to the north to his first ally, a blue UEF, so many great UEF players in here today, going first land by the name of Paul Way. And then to the southeast, we have ourselves a Red Cybran going first land by the name of Snaggy. And last but not least for the entire game, we have ourselves an Orange Seraphim going first land by the name of Aaron. And with that out of the way, we have everybody introduced, which is awesome sauce. And of course, I forgot to mention, it's a subpar commander, because the highest rated player, Aaron, is only 1,000 rated. So we have ourselves some low rated gameplay yet again to continue on from our last week with the four game enders. I don't think this game is going to be quite as uh, crazy. It's not nearly as long, but it is a very fun and action-packed match, so make sure to get settled in and catch all of the action as a mech marine out from Paulway is starting to get some harass down. Looks like he's going to pick up an engineer as my camera work is horrible. That engineer not long for this world going down. A second engineer out from K-Link going to go down. A mech marine has spawned to try and defend, but he's going to have trouble and he's going to switch his targeting up multiple times, but he is eventually going to nab himself. Oh, maybe not. A kill onto the opposing mech marine. Yep, and the mech marine wars are over. No longer going to be shooting at each other, at least for the moment. And as we take a second look at the map, we have multiple changes in elevation and hills. We have about 7,000 mass total, 8,000-ish. And uh, we have, of course, these peaks and val valleys and very different ways to attack and a few channels and lanes, as it were, to attack from and through. So it's going to be interesting. We have a little bit of early calm aggression coming out from Snaggy as he's going to snag himself an engineer kill and two mech kills over towards the mechs of Sonophobis. And... With that, wow, these two colors are almost indistinguishable for, indistinguishable for me. I don't know. I I think it's because I'm colorblind, but I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm red-green colorblind for anybody who doesn't know. It's not really an issue in FAF as none of the, uh, there's not a neon green in my opinion. And neon green and like this red with a neon green would be very difficult for me to distinguish between. But overall, we have ourselves a lot going on. Retros building up a forward production facility over on this eastern side. On the western side, we have four mech marines coming around, possibly for harass, possibly just to claim some territory, get some security up there for K-Link. And we have a few air units coming out on either side. There is a bomber down here for Aaron. Looks like it's going for kills onto these two engineers, and it's going to get them. Those poor engineers working very hard in their day job as a UEF engineer building mass extractors only to be destroyed by the scummy tactics of the Seraphim and their stupid bombers. Seraphim and bombers, name a worse, worse combo. Uh, 
over here to the north, we yet again can cut, track these mech marines. A hit squad of mech marines, Star Wars Commando-esque. And uh, they are these special operatives for the UEF this time. Going to be coming up here, laying in wait for their chance to strike at their opposing enemy. Wait, all of your enemies are opposing. At the opposing UEF player, of course, Paulway. There's a little bit of a harassment coming out from a four mantis out from Snaggy. It seems four units seems to be the order of the day. Groups of four everywhere. Now it's a group of three, which is very un makes makes Jin from League of Legends very unhappy. But uh, nonetheless, gonna manage to possibly pick up a mass extractor in factory. I don't know. I'm a little sus on this. I think that units will get here before that happens. So yeah, just. Probably better to keep running. This Mantis seemingly stuck on the factory. Gonna kill off another Aurora and go up in Veterancy. So it's gonna start regenerating health at that massive one health a second. Mantis now working together to kill off various things. And that seems to be all of the action happening on the map as of the moment. Down here to the southeast, we have a push out from Aaron. And it seems like there's way too many archers in the mix for, mix for Retros. It was one T1 bomber. You don't need to make that many archers to respond to it. But the UEF comm is going to valiantly come forward and start dealing with the Thaum Menace presented by Aaron. Aaron, I love you, but you chose the wrong faction. Um... <laughs> Uh, Aaron over here gonna be engaging with Retros's comm as they come to blows and trade damage onto each other's comms I would like to see I don't think he's building any more archers but if he is that's just the wrong call and he needs to stop um, archers are not gonna do you much good you should just go for interceptors instead or static AA if you're that worried about T1 bombers the Raiding Mantis managed to actually kill off the Factory and the Mexes. They were reinforced a little bit, but the Mantis pack that is not too huge has still been managing to get a lot done. It does seem that Sono, Sono of Biz is uh, having a bit of issue with the micro on those Auroras. He should have been able to deal with this quite easily if he attack moved a little bit more and didn't just walk his Auroras forward, but he is going to clean it up eventually and he's already re the expansion. Going to be a non-issue. It's not going to lead to anything permanent. K-Link using his hit squad, his elite units, the Mech Marines, to secure himself a expansion very close to Paul Way. He's going to be able to if he gets the T2 up here, this is super dangerous for Paul Way. He can just start putting triads over here on the edges, maybe even set up a tactical missile launcher. This could be very dangerous, and I think Paul Way needs to take it very seriously and find a way to dislodge his opponent. Dropping two engineers and building a point defense. While I commend the initiative, these four mech marines going to mean that the point defense would never finish anyways, and they're going to kill the engineers. So that's unfortunate for hallway that's just not gonna work my friend you really need to just get some aggression coming through in the form of a large number of units over here on the southeast side retros has been taking poor trades as far as his comms health goes down to 6200 health versus aaron sitting on over 8000 almost 9000 health meaning retros is in any in any kind of major engagement like we're having right here retros is kind of just on the back foot immediately Aaron and Retros continue to fight it out. Retros not quite able to get enough reinforcements to uh, stop the tide of battle coming out from Aaron. Retros falling down to the red, and he's go he's going to die. He's not microwing the Zui shots correctly, and this is going to be our first ejection here at the 8 minute and 42 second mark. We have Retros falling to the hands of Aaron. The Seraphim yet again committing another genocidal act and taking out a UEF player. His base is going to be transferred over to Siren6977, who is going to move his comm forward to this front, which may be a good call if he can manage to get the production facilities of his ally Retros to be producing at relatively high efficiency. He cannot come up here with the comm and expect to live if he does not outproduce what his ally was with the extra economy he's been gifted plus his economy back at home shouldn't be too much of an issue especially if he manages to get a few of these mexes upgraded to t2 this one damn near close 89 percent that is definitely an unpause and finish that upgrade right now moment but of course these players lower rated not quite able to keep up as well so 
or keep up with managing multiple bases as well as some of our higher rated games. So gonna be interesting. Snaggy running into the calm of Son of Abyss. Oh, it's Son of Abyss. Is it? Son of Abyss is what I'm going with. But Son of Abyss is going to be coming forward with a double gun comm for the Aeon. Relatively strong comm. Nothing in comparison to the UEF Rambo comm. But of course, we can always respect our Aeon brethren. At least they aren't those dirty, dirty Cybrans with their technological implants and complaining about freedom and all. And uh, definitely better than the Seraphim, those genocidal monsters from another dimension. And over here, Aaron continuing to make progress, which is a stunning result from a Seraphim player. As he, okay, I'll stop with the with the faction, with the faction hate. I'll put it on pause for a little bit. But Aaron playing an admiral ga admirable game. He does still need to move forward since full share was on. And he does still need to start taking out some of these buildings built in the back. It's going to be somewhat important to his cause to make sure that Siren does not maintain a huge economy for too long. And these lower rated games, the big thing about having two bases is you upgrade mechs so much better than you would if you weren't uh, on two bases. So your economy kind of snowballs faster than you would expect and causes a lot of issues for your opponent mainly in the form of more shit counters less shit. We have a few T1 bombers out from Aaron, still putting out harassment with T1 bombers. And here in the center, Son of Abyss has managed to uh, get himself doing quite well. He's managed to expand in the direction of Snaggy, who earlier was really getting a lot of done with a lot done with the rating, but this double gun com has really set him back quite a bit. He's managed to get gun speed and range on his own com. And he's using engineers apparently to heal up, which is uh, interesting. It's not super efficient. He's not actually healing all that much faster, but you know, you can always be happy with the little wins. Uh, Siren bringing his comm forward with gun speed and range and stealth, gonna mean he's a little bit more tricky to deal with than his counterpart. As I don't know if gun speed and range is finished up for Aaron yet. I don't even know where his comm currently sits, but. Wherever it is, must be pretty important. We have a few bombers coming in, a large air engagement. I don't think too much is going to come from this. He's going to kill off a mask tracker and a couple other things, but in the end, he's going to lose all of his bombers and most of his interceptors. Down here to the south, I just don't know where the comm of Aaron went. It's back here. He needs to needs to throw an upgrade or two on that and start getting back over to this flank because Siren 6977 really laying in on his position, really taking a lot of territory away from the formerly very dominant performance of Aaron. He's trying to upgrade mexes, but these mexes are just gonna die if you don't do something to hold on to them. His economy cannot withstand losing this much. He's gotten to T3 land, which is a good sign, but he needs the economy to run that T3 land, and he's losing most of his economy as we speak, so really needs to get that speed and range upgrade quickly and get up here to the front to try and deal with Siren. His units are a bit more consolidated and a bit more, le they're not as spaced out, so it's gonna be very easy for him to defend for a little bit, but he just lost a lot of eco. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three more about to go. So he's about to lose, he's pretty much lost 12 mexes, which is a huge, huge loss. Paul Wei now fighting a large force here in the middle out from K-Link. He does have a T2 PD up, but it's not really going to amount to much as that's just going to die to T1 units. I'd like to see him start building some T1 PD since he does have T2 on the comm, but that does not seem to be in his cards. He does have T2 units now scrolling in, but they're mostly flapjacks, so he just needs to... He really needs to get some pillars out over here. Pillars would be very, very useful for him at the moment, but as of the moment, he's going to continue to just fall back a little bit and throw shots towards all of these units. His comm's gonna get a little bit of veterancy here soon, but he is under threat of dying. Has a ton of Aeon units, some Aeon Aurora showing up, along with all these strikers to pour damage into Paulway. He, of course, has that gun speed and range up, or that T2 upgrade, so he's a bit tankier than normal. There's also Othams down here on the southern side, which could threaten Siren. There's a lot of action happening, and Snaggy is now moving forward towards Son of Abyss with that gun speed and range upgrade. It seems that Paulway may be able to fall back and stay alive. 
but it looks like he's going to lose his, lose his forward production facilities, which isn't a huge issue. He has a lot of factories back here. He even has some T2 support factories, but he's going to lose a T2 support factory on the front line and more with this push. Siren now pushing into the base of Aaron, and that might be an issue very soon. There's T2 PD that are going to start warding off this comm, but... A lot of this infrastructure is under a lot of threat. Aaron needs to hold right here, right now. He has pillars on the front line really causing him issues, but his comm is super healthy with that nano and gun speed and range. He may be able to just run down Siren, and if he has the uh, advanced target priorities, he could definitely do so. All he has to do is, all, all that has to happen is Siren has to make one micro mistake, and Aaron can come forward and kill him. And right now, it looks like Siren's gonna make that mistake. If he has advanced target priorities, which it does seem he does, he can just start walking towards Siren and Siren dies. I don't think there's anything here that can stop Siren from dying. Siren's gonna go down. He's gonna be our second ejection here at the 15 minute mark. And that's gonna be brutal as Siren falls. That's gonna be one less player for team one. He's gonna go down. Over here in the center, we have Snaggy, who's also under a lot of threat. He's starting to be whittled down by the Aeon units in the comm of Son of Abyss. And Son of Abyss is going to take out Snaggy, so they're going to go tit for tat. Both red players in this game dying within seconds of each other. And while that's happening over here, we have ourselves Paulway, who's under a huge amount of threat. A large flank out from K-Link in his back line, going to be killing off all of his infrastructure. And Paulway himself under threat as there's a ton of units pouring in. Paulway might die too. It might be Aaron and Steel Darth, who we haven't spoke of much. And Steel Darth had a T3 bomber, I think. I, or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, he has a T3 strap bomber out. It's killed off a few things. He's trying to use it for base defense against T1 units, which isn't super efficient. Fallway looks like he may be able to get clear of all of the danger, but his base is going to be in tatters. And the question is, he may survive, but at what cost? And no, he won't survive. As a ton of Corsair that I have to assume were built up by Siren come in and snipe the calm of Paul Way. Paul Way goes down. We've had so many ejections in such a short amount of time. Son of Abyss and K-Link for Team 1 remain, and they are in a strong position as they have just rolled over the bases. The full share definitely working in favor of Team 1 right now as Team 2 is struggling to hold on against the tide of units coming out from K-Link. And right now, it's kind of Aaron, who's the only one who's been unaffected economically, but he kind of was as his expansions were really taken a beating he's up to t3 land and it looks like he may be able to produce t3 land effectively but is that enough t3 air the only saving grace right now for steel darth he's using it as best as he can he has broadswords coming out to try and help with the defense and that will go a long way but all of this territory has to be regained by aaron and steel darth or they have to go for miracle snipes from this point on because they are just getting taken to pound town and it's really not a fun place to be taken. It's fun to take people to Pound, pound Town, but whenever you're in that passenger seat and the dude's driving, he's like, we're going to Pound Town. You, you know it's bad. You're like, oh, oh no, not Pound Town. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh man, that one got me. I got myself on that one. I like dumb jokes. Oh man. It looks as though K-Link will eventually clean this up, but maybe not in time. He may lose his T3 air, especially if all of these units start focusing down onto the T3 power generator. This is going to be a problem. This is not efficient. Don't do this. Okay, one second. Once this is over, I'm going to explain how stupid the T1 PD line is. He's UEF, so he's already a little bit smarter than like the Cybran or Seraphim players, but doing this is dumb. Um, and he's about to lose T3 air. And in the center, broadswords were killed to ki used to kill Son of Abyss. So, I mean, I guess he is, as I said, he's smarter than other players. The Aeon inferior player getting killed off by broadswords. But he's probably going to lose his T3, land, T3 air, which is super unfortunate. He needs overcharge. Does he have overcharge? He doesn't have overcharge. Uh, 1,600, 1,400, 1,300, 1,900, 600, 400, 300, 200, 100. He's dead. No! The T3 air has died and now he's in a super rough position going up against his opponent who has T3 air and probably T3 land kicking around somewhere around here. 
No, he, he still doesn't have T3 land from the looks of it. As far as T3 land goes, though, Aaron still making decent trades with his T3 land units. He's over here on this eastern flank. These Othams going to go a long way in making this look... This looks like a bad fight, but the Othams have so much DPS. This is, this is actually going to go the way of Aaron, I would believe. I, I would be heavily surprised if this doesn't go the way of Aaron. He's going to lose some mexes, sure, but they're T1 mexes this time instead of T2. And he has a lot of T3 land production. He's expanding out towards the west again. We have some broadswords coming in to try and help him in the defense. The broadsword snipe out of Dart Steel Darth has made this game go from damn near unwinnable to winnable. All you have to do is kill the calm of K-Link. That's all you have to do. You do not have to worry about killing his base. You have to kill the comm. It's snipe time, baby. And what's best for snipe time? Winning one flank and running it straight into his base. <laughs> so, as long as Steel Darth can assist Aaron enough for Aaron to get a ton of T3 units just shoved up any of these lanes, I think that Team 2 can win, but I'm not sure. K-Link... Don't get me wrong, huge advantage to K-Link. It's almost, this is almost an unlosable position for K-Link. That's why I'm theorizing how Aaron and Steel Darth could win. But almost unlosable is still losable, which is much more difficult. T3 Air, maybe he can get back to T3 Air relatively quickly. Aaron with the gun comm. If he didn't get that Rambo comm earlier, this would be even more hopeless. Right now, his comm can significant as long as it stays on T2, it can significantly combat. Not this big, but a relatively size, a, a decent sized T2 army. There's also a ton of broadswords, and there's, bro there's uh, of course, these strap bombers still kicking about. Could see the strap bombers go for mass, uh, go just straight for kills on mass extractors, which may be the best call. Uh, the broadswords won't be able to get in here and deal any significant damage. There's too much mobile flak. The mobile flak even going to cause issues for the ambassadors. Ambassadors going for the comm, I believe this is a mistake. I think that you either go for mass extractors or you try and take away his T3 air. Those are your two best options right now. Going for the bombs on the comm just means you're going to lose your... Yeah. You're just losing your strap bombers for nothing. Steel Darth needs to get back to T3 air. And Aaron is just going to continue expanding. And I mean, it's the right call. Just constantly expand back to where your teammates were. You'll have a very strong economy. And since he's the only player with T3 land, which may not be for a permanent thing, as T3 land has finished up Aeon T3 land, surprisingly. K-Link choosing an uh, inferior T3 land option to the UEF, even though he has all of his build power right next to the UEF T3, uh, factory. But to each his own. The last strap bomber going down over here took out a couple of mexes, but that's not going to be nearly enough. The broadsword's coming in, but there's a ton of mobile flak, and if that mobile flak is ever within range of these broadswords, they will evaporate. The broadsword's very strong, one of the best gunships in the game, but cannot hold up to, to hover. Oh, they just flew. All of them are dead, aren't they? Not a single broadsword survives this. Oh, one broadsword survives. Two? One. One broadsword survives, but it's still flying into some more mobile AA, so that could be a problem. Aaron now trying to hold out against the wave of units coming out from K-Link. Um, just blapping away at the UEF units. UEF units gonna slowly die, but are gonna get some, uh, gonna get rid of the T2 HQ for Cybram. And I think that removes Cybram as an option entirely for Aaron, which might be unfortunate, but he may not care as he does have the T3 army over here just kind of fighting it out with a lot of UEF units and a lot of units for K-Link right now dying. I applaud his aggression, but at the same time, you have to have tempered aggression in this game. Oh, also, let me explain why this is stupid. Literally, space them out. One, R one RD can hit multiple TPD. This is dumb. Don't build lines. Just, like, just select your comm. Oh, that's the wrong one. 
select your com and do something like like he has T2 so just do something like this just move your mouse around and just start building a bigger area sure you're gonna need a lot of T1 PD so build them spread out so they can cover each other and they don't die immediately and also they don't have as much range when you do this if you built them further apart they have more range in total more units gonna be pouring in from K-Link towards the base of Steel Darth. Steel Darth really just not recovering very well whatsoever. Re repairing his, his T3 engineer and trying to run it away. T3 engineer having pathfinding issues. And Son of Abyss saying whoops. Over on the eastern side we have multiple Othams pushing forward. Uh, the issue with that is you can just kind of build a you can just kind of build T2 and T3 air to try and stop the Othams. Of course, you can always build flak and such, and we've seen it be relatively effective against T3 air in this game alone from K-Link. And K-Link playing very well this game, really pushing his advantage at the moment, really just trying to keep Aaron and Steel Darth bottled up in this corner of the map. Not really a corner, more like they have a, they have about 20% of the map and the rest of it is all K-Link territory. I would like... If I had any criticism for K-Link right now, there's a lot of idle engineers and there's a lot of mass points he could just build. So I would just build a bunch, I would queue up all of these mass points as fast as possible. That's, that's honestly just, that's the difference between being a 900 and being a 1000, um, is just remembering to re-queue up all of your structures and constantly do that throughout the game. Um, if you were rebuilding all of these mass extractors and even if they were all T1 and he got them all up, he'd have significantly more economy to throw out whatever he wants to go for. And as you can see, he's an 800. He's, he's not expanding to every mass, point, mass extractor point that's died. Uh, Aaron, a 1,000, just a couple rating, a couple hundred rating higher, expanding like a madman in every direction. <laughs> okay, Link, still trying to push this uh, pillar-sized uh, peg into a defensive line-sized hole, and it's not working. Uh, this is not going well. This is throwing away units on something that isn't going to work. Admittedly, what else are you going to do with all these units? Like, I guess you could save up and try and get a, T3, get a T3 force with this. Or wait until you can build an experimental. But it, it's hard to say. Um, and K-Link is kind of just doing the best he can with what he has. And he's trying to stop Aaron from taking more territory, which is admirable. But he's running out of units to throw at his opponent. And a bunch of Othams over here on the east side are just starting to make head, uh, headway into the base of what was originally Retros' base and now, yet again, K-Link's eastern base. And uh, K-Link, I think he's gonna be able to repel this with the Harbingers. The Harby army survives yet again and the Harby army is doing quite well for itself, but there's just more T3 out here for Aaron. He's, he's gonna slowly win this. Um, there needs to be a bunch of assistance on the T3 factories. It, it really makes a difference, but Percival's now starting to come out onto the field. Percival's gonna do very well into the armies out from Aaron. Uh, Steel Darth, yet again, not really back up to... He's, he's not really a factor in this game. He has some economy, but not a ton. It's not really doing much for him. Um, as far as the air goes, if he's building anything that kind of isn't an attacking unit, K-Link is doing it wrong, you get ASF to to achieve air superiority. You've had that since the T3 factory died. Um, once the T3 factory died, he kind of doesn't have a chance at having air superiority anymore. I'd love to see a capture command onto one of these ASF. That would be funny. <laughs> a lot of scouting coming out from K-Link. He knows everything. He has all of the information. He just needs to decide what to do with it. More T3 production, an experimental. What does he want to do? He's up to 322 mass a second, which is more than the two players on Team 2 combined. Actually, is it? I don't know. Aaron might have been power stalling there for a second. Aaron on a pretty high mass income as well. 
and he needs to start re-expanding to some of these mexes. It may not seem important to, to lower rated players, but seriously, the, the two mass a second you get from a T1 mass extractor is huge. Rebuild those mass extractors and upgrade them if you want to go an extra step and go from being a 1000 rated player to being a 1200 or so. That's about where I'm at, so. I can give advice to getting to 1200 after that. Good fucking luck. Just try hard is, I guess, my advice at that point. Autumn's now coming in and just slaughtering pillars as the Harbinger count just kind of isn't here, and there's a lot of units just pouring out from Kaling's base, but the problem is most of these units are low-tech. Like, T2 units at this stage of the game just aren't enough. He has some T3 mixed in, but this full T3 army is, is going to be able to chew up all of these units, especially with them streaming in the way they are. And uh, Aaron, the good news about all of this and all of his aggression, it may not seem like he's moved very much, but he's gained a lot of T1 mass extractors. And those T1 mass extractors slowly turning into T2 mass extractors and really helping him out. Economically, he's going to be rivaling K-Link here in just a matter of, uh, matter of a few minutes with K-Link not really focusing on eco seemingly whatsoever. He's going for teleporter defense, but... What what are you why are you worried about teleporter defense? He, he's not getting teleporter. He's getting advanced nano repair Teleporter defense while it's inexpensive. It's not what you need to be focusing on right now What you need to be focusing on is how do you win the game? Don't worry about defense worry about offense right now Because that's all you have to do you kill off either of these comms and you probably just win based off having air advantage in fact, a strat snipe would be the call. If you aren't going for a strat snipe right now, you are kind of trolling. Um, he's going to go for a Corsair snipe, which, I mean, is kind of like a strat snipe, but just not as good, even though he could afford a strat snipe. Ten strats kills either of the comms. Well, maybe not Aaron's comm. Ten strats definitely kills Steel, Dar Steel Darth's comm. Over on the eastern side, Autumn's. Continuing to fight a war, and they're winning this war of attrition. The Harbingers that were here earlier have evaporated, and honestly, these units can kind of just push forward. Uh, the Corsairs may pose an issue, but there's T3 mobile shield generators. There's a few lightning tanks, which will be able to shoot down Corsairs. Not necessarily quickly, but they will be able to do it. And Aaron's just gaining a ton of territory, and overall reclaim, Aaron is running away with it with 60,000 reclaim. And overall mass generation, Aaron is still behind K-Link by quite a bit, but he's he's doing he's doing better than he was a little bit ago. Okay, it seems that the snipe is now incoming. It looks like the snipe probably gonna go for Aaron, which may be the wrong call. If this snipe goes for Aaron and Aaron notices it and dodges, it, I think he has to dodge. But if he notices it and dodges, he doesn't die. Um, I think he can dodge enough to keep his 50,000 HP comm alive. So, yeah. Also, this is super telegraphed. You don't need the ASF. The ASF aren't going to do anything for you. They're for killing air units. Your opponent has almost none. The Corsair is coming in. Looks like Aaron canceled his upgrade, and he's going to start dodging right now. And... Yeah, not even close. If this was strat bombers, that dodge one would have been harder to dodge, and two would have been way more impactful. Aaron's going to be able to survive multiple rounds of this Corsair snipe. This is within the territory of he could probably... Oh no, more Corsairs coming in. Maybe Aaron doesn't survive this. Wow, okay, never mind, I might be wrong. It's going to take a while, but this Corsair snipe will eventually start dealing enough damage to kill off Aaron. Um, the ASF killing off whatever is being built by Steel Darth. Aaron, honestly, this, he would have already killed Steel Darth by now, but Aaron slowly falling in HP. He's down to 17,000. He's down to around the normal health a comm has. It's getting desperate. He has all of this region, which is also making it harder. The, the units switch over to shooting at Steel Darth. Steel Darth taking a lot more damage as he's no longer dodging. Steel Darth's gonna die, but Steel Darth's death kills off most of the Corsairs and just gifts over the base to 
Aaron, and Aaron, I would be surprised if he's not sending back his mobile AA and mobile shields. He needs those right now. Almost every Corsair going down to that, and plus now there's Flak built, that's going to be enough. On the eastern side, we can see that all of these units out from Aaron's continuing to push and fo push forward, continuing to gain territory and ground against K-Link. And K-Link is not handling the ground aggression well. He's even losing up here. He just doesn't have enough units being made. He doesn't have enough T3 units being made. And he still had, until very recently, a stronger economy. Now with getting all of Darth's stuff, Aaron has a better economy, better T3 production. The only thing he's lacking is air control. And if he can, and as long as he doesn't get attacked for about a minute, it, like, look, he's already, he was down to about 15,000 HP. He's already up to 30,000 HP. Those shields both adding 10,000 HP, so 20,000 extra HP. He has mobile anti-air in the way, coming on the way. Aaron is really looking to turn this game around. And it's looking like he may be able to do it. Now, a strat snipe still not out of the question and also just simply focusing on t3 land production or anything to deal with the armies that are encroaching on his territory could be great over here the Othams on this side are going to be cleaned up but what about these Othams? what about the t3 and t1 that's over here you need to keep on you need you, you have to start being proactive and you have to start taking things a little bit more seriously and getting up your production he's doing a little bit better with percival production which i do like but it's looking like he's slowly going to get choked out of a game where he should have just slowly choked out his opponents. And as I said, remember when I said the difference between like 9,800 and 1,000 is, is, is re-expanding, retaking over territory? Look, just look at it. All of the mass extractors that were sitting in K-Link's area for such a long time that weren't taken, they're being built not by K-Link. They're being built up by Aaron who's currently about to be threatening the air production for K-Link. Oh, wow. The Corsairs might be able to slowly clean this up. Strat Bombers coming out to try and clean this up, but I don't know if that's it. An Experimental has been built. I don't know where and I don't know what. A GC has been built, and this could be a huge turning point. That GC finishing could theoretically lead to just a kill onto Aaron. It's one of the few things I think Aaron's comm would have trouble killing is a GC and a 1v1. But the problem is it wouldn't be a 1v1. It would be a GC versus the comm and like a hundred Othams. And these Othams just going to come into the air production. They weren't killed off in time. It looks like the T3 air for K-Link is just going to go down and K-Link is slowly falling apart. He's not able to he's not able to keep up with Aaron. And Aaron coming out with a what looks to be a dub whenever it definitely should have been an L and just props to him for playing a stellar game because I just don't see how K-Link can win from this position other than the GC getting something massive and right now the GC is walking into a bunch of T1 units which believe it or not this is not a good use of a GC uh yeah no this is no <laughs> Just know, <laughs> you're going to lose this GC, and it's going to do nothing. I mean, you may kill off this army, but you're taking extraordinary amounts of damage. damage. Walk over them! Crush them with your stubby feet! Yeah! Yes! Do it! Wait, does it not crush? Yeah, it does crush T1 units, but you actually have to step on them. Well, he is slowly stepping this army to death. Um, and Aaron is getting splashed on his comm, which at this point, his comm is an experimental. He could probably, well, not drop the comm of K-Link, but drop over here and kill off everything. That's a definite option. The Othams finally cleaned up, but the question is, at what cost? You lost all of your air production. Sure, you have ASF. You don't have to worry about getting sniped. At least not in the... Uh, in the short term, but you lost all of this. Aaron is expanding, forward expanding into his opponent's base because I think he's just realized his opponent's not going to re-expand. He's probably been watching the minimap. He's been scouting with Team 1 Scouts pretty regularly. He just realized that, hey, if my opponent's not going to take these mass extractors when I kill them, I will. <laughs> Which, this is amazing. All, I bet he's almost, he's almost to 100,000 mass reclaimed. 
Aaron doing amazingly at reclaiming his teammates' territory and taking the enemy's territory, to be completely honest. He's very much so good on the territorial gains. The GC going to continue to walk forward. Has some support, has some personal support coming up in the back, has a cougar. But is it enough to deal with this? Plus the possibility of a splash gun advanced nano com that is an experimental in within itself. 46,900 46, health, 244 health regeneration, a uh, metric ass ton of damage. The GC needs to not walk away from the army. You just kind of have to commit. If you don't commit here, you die. If you commit here and the GC dies, you die. Uh. Man. I think a strat snipe instead of Corsair snipes. If he bored the same amount of mass into strats, he could have A, killed Darth in the same way, just straight up killed Darth, and uh, it would have been a lot better for him uh, because his strats wouldn't have died to killing Darth. An experimental is completed. An Awasa. All right, I know how this game's gonna end. No point in watching the GC, which is down to 13,000 health and about to die to Othams. Here is it. I have to say, I spoke of it earlier. Seraphim and Bombers name a worse combo. Well, here it is again. Dirty Seraphim with their nuke dropping bombers is uh is gonna end the game. So yeah. I'm gonna fly over some flat there's some Sams and Flak, which is not ideal, but it has a lot of health to spare. There's a bunch of ASF or there were earlier. Don't know what happened to all the ASF, but they are uh, apparently gone as they are not immediately chasing down. Oh, there's the ASF. Okay, the experimental bomber's gonna die. Yep. Well, if uh, if if K Link cared about reclaim, which he doesn't, that would be a uh, a huge point of contention and a possible tipping point for this game. But he just lost all of his ground army. There's a ground army about five times bigger than anything he's ever field, fielded, mass-wise. The, the armies are earlier. They were the same size, but they were all T2. This is the same size with a lot of T3. Pretty sure this cost more than the army he threw last threw at uh, Aaron earlier. And uh, K-Link control Ks. So yeah, that's the end of the game. Thank you all for watching. You've been beautiful. Thank you to my patrons. Timothy Calderwood, Sergeant Syphilis, Icy Nightmare, Nogthor, Mike... 1045 I think uh, Idle Betazoid and anybody who I missed I apologize I try. I, I usually hit at least you, you, I hit you at least like once a month so you're good um, you are beautiful oh GTVA I forgot you uh, you are beautiful I'll see you in the next one uh, consider subscribing to my Patreon subscribing to my YouTube liking this video uh, or uh, joining the membership program on the YouTube so yeah, bye bye